All right, dummies, this is from the security operations and incident response domain. Here we go. A security team receives alerts about a ransomware infection spreading across the corporate network. What is the first action the team should take? A, shut down all infected systems immediately. B, disconnect affected systems from the network. C, restore data from backups. Or D, identify the ransomware variant. On the actual CompTIA exam, there will be a lot of questions that you need to seriously pay attention to the last line. What's the first action that the team should take? What is the highest priority? What's the next thing they should do? What's the last thing that they just did? So on and so forth. So make sure that you're paying attention to those words. All right. Hopefully you are ready because we're going ahead and going to the answer. So the first thing you will want to do or the first team, to, the first thing that the team will want to do is con disconnect the affected system for the network, because the longer you keep the affected device or system connected to the network, the longer and the more a chance that the virus or the affected system can affect other systems that are connected to uh, the same network. So the technical term for that is pretty much like lateral movement, meaning that it's going to go to the next system and the next system and the next device. And eventually the entire network would be affected. So you want to make sure that uh, you want to stop, uh, you know, more systems and critical data from being corrupted or uh, stolen. Right. So pretty much that's just uh, being proactive, making sure that uh, more systems and more information isn't taken away. A cybersecurity analyst receives a phishing email that appears to be from the company CEO requesting an urgent wire transfer. What security measure would have best prevented this attack? A, email filtering for domain spoofing. B, implementing network segmentation. C, disabling all HTML based emails. D, using a U, not a UPN. I don't know how old you are, but they used to be a television network. I don't know why the hell. Um, that came to mind, but it says using a VPN for remote email access, UPN, not, not, not UPN. UPN is a television network that used to air something called Homeboys from Outer Space. So first thing is, if a CEO emails you asking for a wire transfer, it's definitely a red flag. And a phishing email is something you should already be familiar with, like I said before, if you are at the Security Plus level. So just to, to give you guys some insight, just in case you landed on this video um, and you just didn't even know about any other certifications. So the way that CompTIA specifically um, teaches certifications is as if you already know things in uh, supposed lower tier certifications. So once you get Security Plus, you're supposed to already know and already be certified technically and everything that is in um, certifications such as ITF plus a plus and even network plus. So it's not going to dumb down anything for you. You ready? Let's go. So hopefully um, the answer you got for that was email filtering, email filtering for a domain spoofing. So uh, you can use stuff like DMARC, or DKIM, uh, SPF, just different stuff like that to prevent phishing attacks by blocking spoofed emails from untrusted domains. So spoofed emails are just pretty much people that are acting like they're someone else, right? So it's a copy of an email, it's a fake email, and they're acting as if they're somebody else. And phishing uh, is just exactly what it sounds like. Somebody is phishing for information, hoping that they find uh, a dummy that is going to either give them information or find some type of info that they can either duplicate, sell, or reuse at a later time. My tummy is growling. Hopefully we can get through this. So the next thing is risk management and compliance. But I'm here for you guys. If, if, the, if the door dash got to get cold, as long as we get through this, and I hope you guys is what's important. So a security team needs to classify sensitive corporate data and ensure compliance with GDPR regulations. What is the first step in data classification process? 
A, encrypt all data. B, identify and label sensitive data. C, apply access control policies. D, implement data loss prevention tools. Why did I take that long as Paul? Let me say it again. Implement data loss prevention tools. In the comments, let me know how you guys doing. How you doing so far, man? So we eight questions in. Have we got any of them wrong? Have we uh, got all of them wrong? Have we got half of them right? How does it look for you guys? And remember, right? Do not get false confidence. In the in the exam room, I'm not going to be whispering with you know my uh, very um, attractive voice. Wow, what the hell I'm trying to say? But anyway, I'm not going to be whispering in your damn ear, telling you what the you know reading the questions to you. And giving you the answers, right? So, if you got all the, if you get all these right, please understand, you should get them fucking right. If you think you're ready for Security Plus, and we're spending a lot more time on each question, just to make sure that you guys get the information than you would on the actual exam. We ready for the answer? Let's see. All right. So the answer is identify and label sensitive data. Okay, I was like, damn, was that one of the answers? Okay. <laughs> All right. So uh yes, that is that is right. I was like, damn, I, the, for some reason I didn't I don't, I didn't remember reading that. But anyway, so you see how quickly things can happen, especially if you're running your damn mouth. So the first step in data classification is identifying and labeling data based on sensitivity, ensuring compliance with GDPR, HIPAA, and other regulations, right? So um, you want to make sure that you classify things correctly so the wrong people don't have access to uh, information, especially when it comes to uh, HIPAA and then GDPR. You can definitely get into uh, some legal issues, get sued and types of you can get sued with the HIPAA stuff as well. And uh, different laws and regulations can you know definitely come down hard on you. So just make sure that um, you identify and you label things correctly so they don't get declassified, get thrown away, or the wrong people have access to stuff they're not supposed to have access to. A company is implementing a cybersecurity incident response plan. Which of the following best represents the correct order of incident response steps? Identify, contain, eradicate, recover, lessons learned. I'm not reading all this. Y'all can, can read. So go ahead and go through that and just think which one do you think you should do I should have made this question a little bit harder. You you guys should get this one right. All right, you ready? So uh, the correct order of incidents response is always identified. Now, I do want to say this on the actual certification. A lot of the answers will look identical, right? So you may have three um, answers that start with identify and you're so used to answering stuff quickly, not reading the whole damn question, not reading all the answers. And you just always say identify, but you don't notice that one of them says identify and eradicate. The other one says identify and contain. The other one says identify and something else. Right. So just make sure that you're reading the entire answer to get all the information. So uh, the correct steps would be. First thing you gotta do is identify. The next thing you gotta do is contain to make sure it doesn't go anywhere else. Next thing you wanna do is eradicate it and get it completely out of there. Next thing is recover. So figure out what damage happened, how you can, um, uh, you know, better prepare um, and get those systems back back online or whatever you gotta do. And then next, last but not least, is lessons learned. Okay, how can we prevent this from happening again? If it does happen again, how can we? get a better plan and process to mitigate this stuff as fast as possible. So the NIST incident response framework follows the exact sequence above to effectively manage security incidents. And this is super important that everybody knows what to do inside of an organization, just so people aren't standing around uh, and the virus or the incident is spreading, stuff is messing up, people, don't have the right chain of custody, so on and so forth. So you got to make sure that you uh, follow this. This is a good uh, way to make sure that uh, the 
response to the incident is the right one. Okay, this is going to be from Identity and Access Management. A security administrator needs to implement an identity verification method that does not require passwords. What is the best solution? A, biometric authentication. B, OAuth token-based authentication. Security questions. Or D, smart card authentication. All right, so you guys answered biometric authentication. So biometric authentication is real simple. It authenticates and verifies you are who you say you are by something that is biologically a part of you. So fingerprints, facial recognitions, so on and so forth, right? So you can use that in tandem with something else, um, and then that would be a multi-factor authentication. This is going to be from advanced threat hunting and incident response. A forensic investigator is analyzing logs from a compromised Active Directory domain controller. They find multiple failed Kerberos authentication attempts followed by a successful login using a service account with domain admin privileges. What attack technique was likely used? A Pass the hash attack, B, a golden ticket attack, C, pass the ticket attack, D, keyboard roasting. All right, so you guys should have said a golden ticket attack. A golden ticket attack occurs when an attacker compromises and Kerberos ticket granting ticket, allowing them to create valid authentication tokens for any user, including domain admins. Oh, wait. So this is this is really a, a pretty a pretty rough one, man. So a golden ticket attack, if successful, it could be a bad day for you, a really bad day for you. So we got um, a couple uh, questions left and i just want to one uh, you guys thank you for uh, spending time with me hopefully this was valuable to you hopefully this um, helps you in your journey if you want even more help you can look in the link in the description and all the ways we can help you number one like i said give you access to that practice question test vault number two allow you to join the itf plus full course. It's a beginner course that will help you get all the fundamentals of IT and prepare you for the ITF plus exam. The next thing that we can help you with is the zero to IT pro program, which is going to help you pass ITF plus, A plus, net plus, and security plus. And last but not least is the zero to IT hero program. With that, you get all of the stuff that I just talked about before that. Plus me personally, I help you and coach you Every week, live classes, interview prep, career coaching, resume revamp, and last but not least, me and my entire team help you actually get a tech job. The only uh, requirement for the Zero to IT Hero program is you have to be a member of the Zero to IT Pro program and already have passed ITF+. Okay? All right. So.